Okay, problems we looked at previously, we had some problems where these two functions were the same. Maybe we would have cosine of inverse cosine or sine of negative sine. But this time, we're looking at problems now that are different. So this time we have a different process in order for solving for these. We can't just simply cancel it out and get three-fifths for the answer because we don't have the same trig function. So now we're going to do a different process. So before we get down to this, I'll explain this part down here in a second. First, let's take a look at what we have inside. Now, in inverse cosine, we talked about this before, that inverse cosine is going to always give you an angle as a result. So we can think of this as sine of theta. So we can say that your theta that's on the inside, all this stuff on the inside, this is equal to theta. So I have inverse cosine of three-fifths. So that's basically the first part of it, how we can interpret that. Now, if I apply a cosine to both sides, then what I would get is cosine theta is equal to three-fifths. So because I have cosine theta equals three-fifths, now I have a way to set up a triangle. So we're going to set this up by using triangles. So you want to refer back to the section we talked about that are on right triangles when we did the right triangle definition, Sokotoa, those kind of things. We want to make sure you understand that first before uh, doing these problems because this is the way I'm going to be setting them up by using triangles. So here we go. We got going through all this. The inside part was theta. We went through and we found that cosine theta is the same thing as three-fifths. I can draw a triangle that relates this information. So the way this, this can be interpreted, how I'm going to get my final answer here is the inside part is going to be for drawing the triangle. That's, that's, that whole part inside helps us to set up the triangle itself. Then once we have the triangle set up, the trig function on the outside is what we're going to draw our answer from. So based on the triangle we have drawn, we're going to choose sine from that triangle. So the inside one is for drawing the triangle, the outside one is for getting your answer. So we have to find out first though which quadrant the triangle is going to be drawn in. That's why we have to use this table. So this table is one that you want to refer to and want to use uh, for these particular problems. We have an inverse cosine on the inside. Now inverse cosine, I went ahead and put down the ranges. We talked about these before uh, for when we originally introduced the inverse trig functions, these ranges were originally there from that table I had before. Now from this, we're going to pull the quadrants uh, out. Now this says that the range has got to be from 0 to pi. That's 0 to 180 degrees, and if you look at the unit circle for that, that tells you that you have to be in quadrant number 1 and quadrant number 2. So that's how you can tell. So if we have an inverse cosine, we're only allowed to draw the triangle in quadrant one or quadrant two. And then we have the other one, trig functions here, the inverse sine and inverse tangent. Again, those have specific quadrants that we have to draw those in as well. So I know that I have a choice to draw the triangle in either quadrant one or quadrant two. That's exactly what the table says here. Now we have to decide which one of these two quadrants it's going to be. And this is where you're going to use all students take calculus. Now out of these two quadrants, it says that my cosine has to be positive. So if I have a choice between quadrant one and quadrant two, I want to pick the one where cosine is positive. Well, when you do all students take calculus, all means everything is positive in the first quadrant. And then in this quadrant, cosine would be negative. So the only uh, quadrant I can draw this triangle in is going to have to be in quadrant number one. So again, the table said I have a choice between one and two came from the range we talked about previously. And then from that, because the cosine was positive, out of these two quadrants, this is the only one that cosine would be positive in. That's going to be quadrant number one. Now that I have the tri triangle drawn in the right quadrant, I'm ready to use the definition for cosine in order to label my sides. So for this, cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent, this is going to be 3 here. And then hypotenuse is the side opposite the right angle. The theta, the angle I'm looking at is actually this one uh, right here. So I got the triangle drawn there. Now, th if you use Pythagorean theorem, uh, or you might recognize that this is going to be a 3, 4, 5 triangle, we're going to find that the missing side here is going to be 4. So this is going to answer, this will complete your whole entire triangle. Now based on this, now that I have the triangle drawn, I'm ready to look on the outside of the, of the uh, trig function. The outside one is going to tell me what answer I'm going to pull from this, and that's going to be my final answer. So if I want to know what the answer for sine, inverse cosine, 3 fifths, 
That means that I'm going to pick sine from this triangle. So sine is the opposite over hypotenuse, and so in this case it's going to be 4 fifths. So the answer to the whole entire problem, that's my exact value, 4 fifths.